Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So today we're gonna do something a little different. Today's video is another part of our divination exploration series. And we are gonna go over the trauma oracle and put it to use. We are also going to be using my new Little Wizards mini deck that I think is quite a good match. So we're gonna see how this is gonna go. But first, I thought we'd start off with a walkthrough of the Trauma Oracle and the workbook and then put it to work. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell at Tarot Not Plans here on Tarot Tube, Instagram, and TikTok. All right, guys, let's get into this. First, I want to show you the workbook and then we will zoom in and go over the cards. So it's a fairly thick book. You can see here and it is in beautiful full color i love it um and i think it's meant for you to work right in it of course the workbook but because i am the way i am i'm probably going to be taking one of my little notepads here i have these um bigger post-it notes and probably sticking it on the page i'm writing on this and then removing it whenever I go to do the exercise again, so I can use the workbook more than once. That's what my thought process is, but let's get right into it. Move our little Harry Potter merch here so we can get right into this stuff. So if you change nothing, nothing will change. Ain't that the truth? So I love how it tells you where everything is in the book. That's great that we have a really good table of contents, a preface. You can pause here if you want to read it. Um, and then this is, I think, kind of how the book is going to be flowing, at least for the cards. So what I believe is there's a page layout like this for each one of the cards that's in the deck, which I think is a really good starting off point if you've never done inner child work or done shadow work. I think this kind of falls in both of those categories or it's like a cross point. Um, so these are all of the cards that are in the deck. And then you'll see, you can write down experience, witness, thoughts, feels, and processing, which is where I would say I would put something like this down so then I can reuse it more than once. And I like that it gives a further explanation here of what the card is actually about. I think that's really fun. Now, I have looked up other videos to see if there was other walkthroughs. I did find one or two on the Oracle and like one that showed one or two pages of the notebook, but not a full walkthrough. So I don't know if this is a bad idea, but you know, I was looking for a full walkthrough of this. So we're gonna give you a quick little walkthrough. Now, I do also have a quick walkthrough of the deck over on my TikTok. If anyone's just looking for a quick flip through, I do have one over there, as well as for my little wizard's tarot for the big one and the little one in case anyone is fully interested in those as well as i did um a walkthrough of the mini and the regular size of the little wizards together which i uploaded just before this video so there's that but yeah i love how colorful these are i love these little ghosties with the flowers on their head and how it like helps express their emotions and I love how these are genderless, so this is good for anyone to use. Um, I know on a lot of this stuff, she put like trigger warning, which cool. But I think like it's called the trauma oracle, so kind of a little bit self-explanatory. But you know what? Good for anyone that may not know what trauma is, I guess. But yeah, it's a beautiful little thing. So I guess that was the last card, um, Vicarious Trauma. And then we're getting into some card spreads, which I think is really cool. I guess you can make your own. So this is a really cool workbook and I'm really excited to get into it and do some work. There's some trackers. 
some self conversations checklist and i think like it has a pretty big variety of cards like i know it's not as big as like they reclaim but reclaim also has positive cards and negative cards in that deck where this one's just like trauma cards so it is a little bit different and this is the creator amira burgos and she does have a youtube channel as well um i think everything for her is under push kitty um here is the information card from the little wizards in case anyone's interested now i know there's no i believe she took off the full size little wizard but i believe she still has minis available so that is the workbook and then here is our trauma oracle maybe let's zoom in a little bit so we can take a better look So it is in just like a simple tuck box here. I love the backs, they're super cute. It's not edged and I haven't decided if I'm edging it yet. So here's the trauma oracle and her information. I think it's definitely easier to read on the other card. So I don't think I've shuffled these yet. So they're mostly in alphabetical order, I believe. So let's take a quick peek here at what we've got. We have abandonment, abortion, acute trauma, addiction. Uh, it's, in, oh, adversity, aggression. It throws me off a little bit when there's more than one word. An analysis, paralysis, anxiety, baggage betrayal booted bullying child neglect codependency cognitive dis dissonance demons which looks like the back of the card depression disconnected dysseria I don't know that emotional abuse, emotional intelligence, empathy, energy, vampires, envy, failure, fear, guilt, heartbroken, historical trauma, homelessness. And these just, these drawings that are going with these words are very poignant. Like, they're very descriptive. Ignored, insomnia, internalizing, isolation. I just don't want to get any on the wrong side here. Because they're square cards, so that's a little interesting. Loneliness, loss, manipulation, medical trauma narcissism physical abuse ptsd rejected self-sabotage sexual abuse the road not taken timid verbal abuse vicarious trauma and egoism so yeah i think that's a good chunk of traumas to have to deal with to be honest with you like I love my Reclaim, but I think this is, like, a different deck, like, all together. Um, so, what I was thinking for this divination exploration exercise is that we would try out the workbook. And what I was thinking is, I do have both sizes of the Little Wizard, but I thought that this mini one would go really well size-wise as... Oh, let's get you in frame here. Be really good size-wise comparison... As well as, you know, Harry Potter for me is definitely a big part of my childhood, especially my teen years. Like, I started reading the books when I was in grade five. So, in my last two years of elementary school, I watched all the movies up until the last one came out when I was in college. So, like, a lot of these things that I may have felt would have been when these movies were going on. As well as I think, like, the artistry matches, the color matches. Like, I thought this might be a good deck pairing 
to work through some of these things and might make me feel a little bit better knowing that it's Harry Potter. So let's take a little shuffle and see how she goes. So we are doing the divination exploration. So let's first off start by giving this deck a little shuffle and picking a card and then seeing where that brings us. I don't think this is the best deck to riffle. I think this is definitely a more hand over hand, but I don't want to keep knocking this camera. Or like if you feel like you're having an emotion, maybe going through and looking for that emotion. I'm going to do a little shuffle and see what happens here. If it's something that I resonate with or not. But I feel like I resonate with a lot of these things. So we'll, let's see what's going to happen. All right. Split it in half. See what comes up. Empathy. That's a really strong card for me, actually. And I feel like it's not... I feel like this is something that I'm comfortable speaking about here in this space. So let's do that one. So let's start off then seeing what the workbook says about empathy. All right, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what it says about empathy. All right, empathy. Empathy, the ability to connect. Well, let's put our card out here. The ability to connect with the thoughts, feelings, or emotions of another. Many individuals who identify as empath describe the experience as involuntary. They are able to understand and empathize without sharing the same perspective. People can also develop empathic personalities over time. Empathy can be draining. Some describe it as a gift, others not so much. Protect your space and be mindful of trauma dumping. So, if we go here, we have experience, witness, thoughts, feels, and processing. So, like I said, I would just stick one of these sticky notes in here. Or a smaller one, depending on how many thoughts I have. So, we are going to do that. And maybe we will use our big box to help hold down the side of the book because you know she wants to close there we go perfect so why don't we pull two cards to help explain empathy and how I feel empathy for others let me mix up this deck as best as I can because it hasn't been shuffled yet as I just went through it in my other video. Do, do, do. See if we can ruffle, riffle it. She little, but let's see if she will riffle anyways. Mm, she's somewhat riffled. A little bit, a little bit. I probably can do better than that. Let's see if I can do another riffle. To me, I like to do three riffles. That's kind of, especially a new deck, I generally do more. But when I shuffle for myself, I generally like to do three riffles. That wasn't a very good one either, but... I guess a couple of shitty ones is better than nothing, right? Right. Thanks for hanging on and being patient as we work through this spread. I thought this would be a really fun series doing this divination exploration and going to different ways that I might do different spreads or do different tools. One more attempt at rifling and see if it goes better. Oh, a little bit better. A little bit better. 
I think it's hard with the camera in front, but you know, when it's just me, myself, and I, it might go a little smoother. But at least we got a little shuffle going. All right, let's pull out two cards now. And hopefully they're not rammed right beside each other. Nope, good, we got two different cards. All right. So we have the Five of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. So to me, that would show with empathy is I really feel other people's pain. You know, I can recognize when my friends aren't doing well, whether they're not answering the phone or sometimes I just know they're having a bad day. Like me and my best friend, we can totally... When we're having a really bad day or a really good day, we can almost feel it. And like, if I call him and I'm having a really hard day, he'll be like, I was just thinking about calling you. And I'll be the same way. Like, we really can feel each other's pain sometimes. And I think that goes with Three of Cups as well. Is like, especially with people that are really close to me, like my really, really, really good friends, I can feel whether or not especially when I'm in their presence, if they're okay or not. And I know everyone can tell by looking at someone like, oh, they were okay or not. But like, I can feel their pain. Like a lot of times it's because we've been through similar experiences or we've been through experiences together. And I just think that empathy, especially with these two cards, is such a strong pairing because I think it shows like both sides of empathy. Like you can feel the good and the bad of the people that are close to you in your life. You can feel when they're struggling, but you can also feel when things are good and you're gathered and you're happy. And sometimes when people are having a hardship, it just means getting together and that can do so much. So for me, I think this was like a really good pull. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this really like went together. So then if I'm doing the workbook work, we are doing... Let me grab my trusty pen here. We are going to be doing experience witness thoughts. Don't mind my chicken scratch feels in the bottom is processing. And we are dealing with empathy. Okay. So now that we have that in there. Woo! That book does want to close, doesn't it? So for me, experience. Um... Feeling, oh, I guess for feelings, um, gut feeling. That's how I would put my feelings. Sometimes it's just a gut feeling of knowing if the people around you are okay or not. Experience would be like hanging out, phone calls. Like, my best friend lives really far from me. So, like, that's why I say, like, I feel like I do have that empathic connection with him. That sometimes we just know when something's wrong with each other. Um, for witness is, like, the people that surround you. So, your friends. I'm working on it. Um, being more em empath empathetic with other people. I struggle sometimes. But sometimes I also am so empathetic that it drives other people crazy. Because I do think about how... I feel like I am very soft-hearted because I am so empathetic with people. That I always think, like, my words have... How do I say this? My words 
can do something. They can either pump you up or tear you down. They can either make you feel better or they can make you feel worse. That's what everybody's words can do. So I'm very much aware of that majority of the time. Not always. There's, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but even a lot of times when I'm not aware of it, I think about it after and I feel really bad if I've said something that I feel came off bossy or bitchy or harmful. I just feel like I'm very empathetic. So, um, and then thoughts, like, think about it. And then for processing, I would do... It's just, I feel like processing is knowing your boundaries. Like, it's great to be empathetic, but you can't be empathetic to everyone. And that's something that I really struggle with. Is being empathetic to everybody means that you're not caring about your own feelings most of the time. You're so worried about everybody else and that's not good either. So it's knowing your boundaries of how empathetic you can be and who you're empathetic with. Sometimes you can't control that, but if you can, that's a big step to ensure that you're keeping yourself safe. So yeah, that's kind of how I would do it. You know, maybe if I had a lot, like I have a lot of feelings like we've discussed, but, like, that would be, like, a trick and scratch of how I would go through that. At least for this time. If anyone has any thoughts, please leave them down below. Um, this is my first time doing this. Obviously, I just got it this week. And I've been dying to play with it. But I was waiting until I had time to film it and show you guys how I might work with it. So, yeah. That is my Little Wizards Mini Tarot. Along with my Trauma Oracle. And I think that was, like, actually pretty successful, if I do say so myself. So, until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed this little divination exploration exercise with me. And, yeah. Until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell at Tarot Nap Plans. And I'll see you around TikTok, Instagram, and here on TarotTube. Bye, guys.